it's weird. There are a few days in my life that I can actually remember the entirety of the day or even just like waking up that day. There's very few of those days. But November 28th, 2010 was one of those days. I wake up, I have some breakfast, like some cereal, and I very distinctly remember crushing two caffeine pills in a glass of warm water and drinking it. And it tasted terrible, but I needed that to wake up. And then I hopped on my bike and I rode down the street to the Sonoma State campus where I was going to school at the time. At that point, I met up with a friend and we were going to the gym. We called it the rec center. I was a group fitness instructor and a personal trainer. I worked out a lot, most days, if not every day, for at least two to three hours every day. Um, so this was very much a normal routine for me. We were doing legs, so we started with squats. Uh, we, I think, had gotten up to somewhere around 315 pounds, something like that. And I was doing my set, and it was, I think I was doing, I don't, I don't remember, and it doesn't really matter, but I was doing like five reps or something at 315. And at some point in that set, I started to feel sick, like, like super nauseated. I had a headache, my head was spinning, I felt like suddenly very weak, and my heart was like beating really fast, even after I stopped the workout. So I sat down on a chair next to the squat bench, and my head was spinning, I'm just staring at the wall, like, what is going on? I had pushed myself in other workouts before, but I had never felt this bad. I mean, I had worked out for years, and I had worked out for hours at a time, I had lifted heavy weight that you know made me super dizzy and and felt like shit and you know i like thrown up i had bled i had had all kinds of things happen during my workout but for whatever reason this was the worst that i had ever felt and that really surprised me because it didn't necessarily feel like the most intense workout i had ever had i had definitely had more intense workouts where I did not feel like that. In fact, I felt good. But for whatever reason, I felt the worst I had ever felt in my life after just doing a couple sets of, a, a, of an exercise that I did all the time. So I was disoriented and felt sick, and I was very confused about what was happening in my body. So I was feeling terrible, but because of my mentality as a personal trainer and a group fitness instructor, I kind of felt like, it was just going to pass. I really thought that eventually it would just go away and I could continue working out. And that's what I did. I kept working out. I tried to push through it. We did lunges. Uh, we did deadlifts. We did a bunch of different exercises that probably, in retrospect, only made me feel worse. Finally, at the end of the workout, we were doing one last exercise and I just could not lift the weight and I gave up. I just put the weight down and told my friend I had to go home because I felt so bad. So I went home and I lay down in bed trying to recover, trying to rest. My head was spinning. I felt like I was going to throw up. I was so weak. I felt like I had a fever even though I didn't. My heart is just pounding so hard. I can feel it in my head. I can feel the pressure in my head. I can feel, I can like hear the heart beating in my head. I don't know if you ever had that happen, but it's like the worst feeling. It's like Somebody's just like knocking on your head over and over again and you don't know why. I mean, it makes you think like there's some issue with your heart. And I did. I felt like I was having a heart attack or something. It was really scary. But eventually, I think I got a little bit of sleep that night, so not much. I woke up the next day feeling worse than the night before, which I didn't even know was possible. That morning, I went to urgent care. The urgent care doctor gave me very little help. She did send me to a cardiologist because I said that my heart was beating really fast. And honestly, that was kind of the biggest symptom. And that was mostly because that was the symptom that stood out the most to me. It was the most jarring, but really, I don't think it was the issue. I went to the cardiologist and I wore a Holter monitor for a while, which is like basically this like big, uh, looks like a cassette player that you strap to like your leg or something. And I wore it while I tried to work out again. And it showed that my heart rhythms were fine. It's basically like an EKG, a small EKG or a wearable EKG. 
Um, and that this was like, you know, over a decade ago. So I'm sure the technology now is probably a little bit better. Um, but so I tried to work out again and it didn't go well. I like was barely able to do anything. I mean, even less than I was able to do in the workout where I got sick. So I spent the next few weeks going to different doctors, the cardiologist. I went to my general practitioner who did some different tests and she eventually found out that I had mono, mononucleosis, which is a pretty common illness for um, young people in high school and college, which I was in college. She gave me a prognosis of like six weeks, six weeks, I'd be back to normal, which was a relief, but it was kind of hard to imagine because I still felt so bad, like the worst I'd ever felt. And to think that in six weeks, I could just be back to normal, it'd be kind of amazing. But you know, I think that or at least at the time, I thought it was in the realm of possibilities, because I had had other illnesses before, like I'd had strep throat. And it's like, I took antibiotics. And within a few hours, I was almost back to normal. So maybe in six weeks, I would be back to normal. But six weeks passed, and I did not return to normal. I kind of felt progressively worse. And I, but I think that was exacerbated by the fact that I kept trying to live my life unhindered. I was working, I was trying to work out. I was trying to teach my group fitness classes. I was trying to go to my regular academic classes and still hang out with friends and go to parties and do all that stuff. And when you're sick, those things are just not possible. I was, however, able to get through the semester. So that was my second to last semester and I was able to finish it. So I just had one more semester to go before I graduated, which I was excited about, but I was still sick. So I, that really hung in the balance of whether I could finish. And this was the um, kind of fall winter semester. So we had a winter break, the holidays like Christmas and New Year's. So I went home and I spent the holidays with my family, hoping that my my illness would get better, but I still had to teach my group fitness classes, or at least I was still committed to teaching them. But I was really too sick to do that. So I had to have people cover for my classes. And eventually I had to give them up altogether because I just was not well enough to teach them. So with those out of the way and my my personal training clients out of the way and my own workouts out of the way, really I just kind of tried to focus on getting through my academic classes because that really was the most important thing was to graduate. So I had one semester to go and I tried to return to school that kind of spring, I think it's like in February, I tried to go back to class and it didn't go well. I had, I had basically a, another episode like I did when I was working out. My mom had actually brought me to school and I was I was going to try to, I was going to try to go to class. I had already scheduled or I had already registered for my classes and I was going to go to class the next day, but I felt so bad the night before that I didn't sleep at all. And I was like in a cold sweat. I was shaking. I was weak. I was so nauseous. I felt like I was going to throw up every 30 seconds and I just could not do it. I couldn't go. I couldn't even get out of bed. So I had to give up my classes that semester. I had to take that semester off. And I basically, I just kind of went back home with my mom and, and tried to recover. Eventually, uh, I think it was either the next semester or the semester after that, I was able to return to school. I had, try, had, I had tried to take four classes. This was like almost a year, if not more, after I initially got sick. So this is like a full year later of basically feeling the way I'd felt that first day that I worked out or sometimes a lot worse and feeling like that for the full year for a full year and not know not really having any answers not knowing what's going on my health had sort of gradually improved a little bit or at least stabilized so that I was able to go to at least one class I had initially registered for four classes because that's what I needed to finish and I was able to just um, eke out one class. I had to drop the other three because I just realized there's no way that I can do this. So I took one class and basically I had to take on full student loans for a full semester just for one class, which was added like $10,000 onto my student loans, which was just ridiculous to pay $10,000 for one class <laughs> to take one class. So instead of sort of 
inching it out going one class a semester, which is basically all I could handle going to class in person, I decided to do the rest online. So I I left uh, Sonoma State. I moved out of the, ha- the house that I'd shared with my roommates and I moved back home with my mom and I basically took the next three classes online, which proved to be even more expensive, but um, it was better than risking my health going to class in person. And that was a really hard thing. It was hard to, it was hard to give up on my career. It was hard to give up on going to class in person. It was hard to give up on uh, the house that I shared with my roommates because I really loved my roommates and I loved you know, what we had. We had a good thing going. We would work out together. We would hang out together and I just would miss them a lot. But I had to put my health first and that was really the main priority. I really didn't have a choice. And in the end, I did end up graduating. I was pretty proud of that. I, it took, it took a long time and it took a, that last semester took probably as much effort as the whole three years before it, but I was able to eke it out and get my diploma. And that really meant a lot to me, but I was still sick. So that really put a damper on anything that I achieved, I guess. And now with my degree out of the way, I just focused on trying to get healthy again, or at least get answers as to why I was sick and why I wasn't getting better. So if you want to hear more about that journey, let me know in the comments. You can ask me any questions and maybe I'll do another video like this and continue the story. All right. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. And I want to kill that fucking bird out there. I want to kill it. It's a, one of those fucking stellar jays. I think. I very distinctly remember waking up. Um.